Hey everybody, welcome to 2016, hooray. Um, I'm your host, Matt, this is the Web Marketing Series. And uh, you know what, we have a ton of cool stuff that we have to do this year, literally this year. Um, we have to build a company and grow our audience and do a whole bunch of cool stuff. But that's also a lot of work, and so I thought for this first episode, we do something a little bit introspective and possibly fun, which is to talk about a really cool article that I saw. Finally, I will just say as a programming note, sorry I didn't have any episodes at the beginning of this year. Um, I was doing all that boring business stuff that you often have to do. So I was doing taxes earlier and I was doing, uh, I started a new project for iOS and a bunch of like kind of that stuff. Oh, and I'm getting married too. So uh, a lot of that stuff. But this is my first uh, episode of the year. Obviously, these are going to be regular now moving forward. So here's what I want to talk about for this episode, though it's tangentially related to um, our specific task, but I think super laser-like focused on me as like a person who does business. So basically, I woke up this morning and I was scrolling through Hacker News and I saw this story right here, this three years as a one-man startup. And I said, hey, I'm a one-man startup. And so I read the article and it's not too long. I actually suggest that you give it a, a, a read if you want. What he basically talks about is, hey, I am a startup. I do like a language learning and services uh, uh, activity, like a thing. And uh, here are what I found really interesting, some specific numbers, which eerily enough actually related to mine almost identically. So I actually made about 14,500 in profit this year, uh, down significantly from what it used to be, but like I still at least made some money this year. And basically he just talks about where he's going. But what I found really interesting about this was that as cool as this was to read, it was still a snapshot. It's a good snapshot. It gives us like right here, we can see that he's growing his revenue, he's growing his users, but it's still just a snapshot. And it really kind of reaffirmed that I really like what I'm doing with this format. And hopefully if you're watching this, you like it too, which is that snapshots are good, but literally the reason why I started this, uh, this video series is that they're ultimately tainted. Right? It's only just a single moment in time, whereas a video series like this, we will be able to go back and document all of the nonsense, bad ideas, and possibly good ideas that I've had over the course of the year. And so I really kind of was reaffirmed to learn this, that all this thing did here was give me a good read, but raised a lot of questions. And so hopefully this format makes it so there's fewer questions to ask and provides more answers. Now that said, the other point I wanted to make briefly was that uh, one of the things that I would like to do this year is submit this video series and my product to Hacker News just to get some feedback. And man, oh man, this guy's been getting a ton of feedback. I mean, by Hacker News uh, standards, this is a really big story right here. This guy's been getting a ton of feedback. He's responding to people. And quickly, what really kind of struck me about this is like feedback often turns into is like, a bunch of conflicting advice. So for example, one user on here was saying, well, I think you could grow your business by charging more for your product. So right now it's $5 a month, you should charge 25. I would happily pay for that much. And then inevitably, two comments later, somebody saying 25 bucks a month, are you kidding me? Um, I could never afford that. You guys may be rich, but I'm not. So a lot of conflicting advice, um, and then even some very specific advice, which is all really good advice about like, literally what he should do with this website. So somebody said, hey, one of your website is a little bit confusing. You should try some of this stuff. And he actually linked to the site, which I had not seen before, but it's called goodui.org. And he said, yeah, you should try a couple of these things. And so I won't lie, I actually read through this website this morning and I was like, oh, that's a great idea. I should try that quick. So for example, item four right here, try social proof instead of talking about yourself. I actually had that idea like it's original, but I had that idea a couple years ago and I actually had uh, solicited a couple of comments from my users and these guys were awesome enough to provide me uh, with some, some super cool quotes and some nice recommendations here. And so, yes, I put those on the site this morning. I put them right here and I also put them on my purchase page as well, right? Like I do have users and a lot of those users are really happy and I love you guys that you are happy. And so why not tell potential users about that? So a lot of really good advice on the site right here, but it also made me think of, same as I kind of retrospected here where I'm glad I'm using this format that I am because instead of a snapshot, it's like, you know, a living diary. It also made me think that you have to be really, really careful about spending your time doing this kind of stuff as opposed to what for me is the far more useful option, which is building traffic. 
as I kind of said in the beginning of this series, I have spent the last four years, ever since my stupid, stupid Google penalty, trying to bring traffic, or excuse me, trying to tweak, not bringing traffic, but trying to tweak my website and my product and my pricing. And believe me, I have done it all and none of it has helped. And the reason why is because my core problem is not the website it, like is confusing or loads slow, like that stuff is all good. It's that I don't get traffic. And so that's why thinking about as I go into 2016 here, I was just like, yes, I am on the right path. I could do all of this stuff right here, but at the end of the day, it's probably not gonna matter. And the only reason I say that is because I've got four years of it not mattering. Like four years of waking up in the morning and saying, man, I should try a new website layout, or man, I should change my prices, or change how I get people into my store page, or literally hundreds of ideas over the last five years, and none of them have worked. Because at the end of the day, my problem is traffic. And so I would beg you, don't make the mistake that I have of basically wasting time tweaking small things or even making gigantic changes like going from a two column to a single column layout. Just focus on what your real problem is. And sometimes the problem is finding out what the problem is. But for me, it's traffic. Not enough people know about my site. I don't have enough potential users coming in, so I don't have enough sales. This is a bit of a stretch, what I'm about to do here to close off, but I just wanted to point it out because I did think of, like I wanna be honest in this series. I don't, if I'm an idiot, I want it to at least be out there that I am. <laughs> but it made me think of, when I when I started reading through the site right here and just kind of thinking about my last five years, it made me think of this guy right here. I don't think this page has changed in the last decade. I literally don't. I know their font is a little bit different, but I'm pretty sure like the overall structure of this sign up form for Facebook hasn't changed at all. And yet it is without exaggeration that I say that this is literally the most important and single most popular and effective sign up form in the history of human civilization. This, this right here, this thing that doesn't look too pizzazzy, this thing that you could criticize probably in a million and one different ways as to, well, this is not clear enough what the thing, this works. And I think my key takeaway, and this one, I don't know if it's a good point or not, but my key takeaway is what Facebook did was create a genuinely useful and compelling product, and then they had a ton of popularity. They had a ton of traffic, such that if Facebook signups starts like dropping off, they literally have a problem where like they're they have to just find new people on the planet to sign up. Like that's their problem right now. But if they actually had, let's say, four years a problem where they Signups just started dropping off. They literally had like maybe 40 or 50 signups a day. I mean, I'm literally talking like they were going to die as a company. I guarantee you this signup page would be way different than it is right now. It would have a full screen image. It would have a giant button. You wouldn't ask for all of this. Oh my God, look at this. Five fields. Are you kidding me? That's way too. No, it would be like put in your first and last name. We'll generate a password for you. Like, this would look different. But the reason why it doesn't is because they're popular. And it's because they focused on traffic. That's what Facebook did. And look, in a lot of ways, Facebook just kind of got traffic because it was popular and it was a network effect, et cetera. I realize that. But that is why this hasn't changed. That's why you can't criticize this because at the end of the day, this is what traffic gets you. Is you just have whatever. And I'm, by the way, I'm not even saying this is a bad sign up for them, but it just makes me think of me. My problem is not that I could make small tweaks to my website. My problem is that I don't have traffic. And so that's what we're gonna focus on in 2016 is that, the thing that really, really matters to me, which is getting people on the website. So with that, hopefully I haven't rambled on too much. Again, we have a lot of cool stuff planned in 2016 here. Again, sorry for the slight delay, but hey, business, new apps. I actually wanna talk about my app stuff. And I hope you had a great holiday season. And I hope that if you are joining me on this journey here, that you think really, really hard. <laughs> Think really freaking hard about what your core problem is. Is it that you should be making small tweaks to your website, changing your prices, or is that you just don't have enough people coming in? Me, I know exactly what my problem is, so we're gonna focus on that, obviously, as we move forward. So thanks a lot for being here, and uh, let's let's see what we can do in the next uh, in the next couple months here.